What have the last five years been like? I don't know. Like we're trapped in a nightmare for one thing. Well, it's been very hard. You know, taking care of Nick 24 hours a day, uh, tending to his needs, tending his insurances. It's been a hard. It's been very hard for us. It's a day in Baton Rouge history that just about every single person can remember exactly where they were and what they were doing on July 17th, 2016. It's not a happy date. Uh, never is when it rolls around. Because it just, it brings back memories of, you know, what happened that day. You know, the, the shock of getting woken up by a telephone call and then trying to find Nick and then getting another call telling us to get to the hospital. To be honest with you, I'm so tired that it's just another day with me. I mean, it comes and it goes. It is what it is. And as long as Nick is doing well, I'm fine. You know, he wants to survive. I want him to survive and we'll fight it to the end. To avoid adding more pain and perhaps even PTSD for the families and cops involved, we're choosing not to rewind to the what all happened and how on that early Sunday morning. But that one day did change many lives forever. For one, East Baton Rouge Sheriff's Deputy Nick Touye, whose parents, James and Mary, are now his full-time caregivers. He's told his children that he regrets getting up and going to work that morning because he thought that, you know, he would uh, stay home that day. Actually, he had vacation scheduled for that weekend. And of course, with all the situation, everything going on, his vacation was canceled. Making a lot of progress with Nick until COVID hit. And then uh, anybody that's a traumatic brain injury patient uh, or their family know that they have to have therapy and it has to be ongoing. And when therapy stops, they tend to lose ground. Well, Nick's therapy stopped uh, just before COVID hit. Meaning five years later, Nick has lost a lot of gained ground. For now, he remains in the hospital. In fact, today is day 60 for this particular stay. Uh, back in uh, 2017, before we left here, they had, the, the therapist there had Nick driving his power chair himself using a head array with head controls. And we had video of Nick chasing his therapist with his power chair. He's gonna run you over. There you go. Come to me. Go, go. Go Other lives changed forever include wives and children of three fallen heroes. Sergeant Brad Garofola, Officer Montrell Jackson, and Officer Matthew Gerald. Five years later, Sergeant Garofola's wife, Tanya, and their three children have obviously gotten older. Braley is now 20 years old. Last year, in the month of July, she started the Brad Garofola Vest Fund in her dad's honor. She raises money to buy angel armor vests for Caliph, the Capital Area Law Enforcement Foundation, a nonprofit that started after this particular day in Baton Rouge. The vests are meant to protect officers from high-powered rounds, including rifle rounds. Each vest costs nearly two grand. In her first year, Braley raised enough to buy five vests for officers, and she got to pick who received them with her leaning towards those with families and children. One of the recipients last year had patches made reading Braley's Angels and proudly wears it on his new vest. This year, her goal is to double it and raise enough to buy at least 10 vests. Meanwhile, Brad Jr. is starting college this year at Southeastern pursuing criminal justice with hopes of following in his dad's shoes. Their youngest, Samantha, is now 12 years old. Officer Jackson's wife, Trenisha, has left no stone unturned when it comes to honoring her hero. The Montreal Lyle Foundation started in 2016, and since then, she's been raising money to give away bikes, Barbies, balls, and shoes, things Montreal absolutely loved, shoes and children. 
It's also why she started badges and book bags, and that too gets bigger every single year. One of Officer Jackson's final Facebook posts mentioned the words, don't let hate infect your heart. Trenisha had that phrase trademarked and raised money for the foundation named after her husband. Their son Mason was only four months old when he lost his father. Today, he's a young boy at five years old and his mom's greatest joy in life. Officer Gerald's wife, Desha, is now in an externship to become a medical lab tech and will be graduating with an associate's degree. They had two kids together, Finley, who dreams to barrel race one day, and Baby Buttons, who was conceived just days before July 17, 2016. Fallon, who carried his dad's nickname of Buttons because of his blue eyes, is now going into pre-K, K-4 this year and hopes to start cattle sorting with the family. Matt's stepdaughter, Dawson, is now headed to high school and plans to ride in the high school rodeo. Desha does have another baby boy, Jensen, and she said he keeps them on their toes. Sergeant Bruce Simmons was shot in the arm and has struggled with getting it back to 100%. Five years later, he said, quote, I'm doing good. I officially retired from the East Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office on July 23rd, 2020. My arm is healed about as good as it's going to. It's never going to be like it was, but I'm still blessed to still be here and still have it. I'm still dealing with why I left. I miss the job and some of the brothers and sisters I worked with, but due to a lot of issues I was met with when I went back after my second set of surgeries, it was better for me to leave than stay. Sergeant Simmons and Deputy Touye were just down the street that day when they heard the distress call from their fellow brother and rushed to the scene. Nick took three bullets that changed his life forever. Nick was shot in the head on the left side. The bl bullet actually went in, took his ear off. The ear had to be put back on, you know. But it took all of the bone here, fragmented all the bone, and it's got fragments of the shrapnel from the gunshot all in the brain. And it hit the back of his skull, split that skull, you know, and it's all in his brain stem. So the brain stem is why he can't move. He moves involuntarily. The left side controls all of his swallowing. He can't swallow, he aspirates, he keeps pneumonia. Gets all kind of bugs in the lungs from pneumonia. So we suffer with that. But Nick also has a shunt in the head to relieve some of the, the fluid that gathers around his brain. That gunshot wound just tore his abdomen to pieces. He's had over 30 surgeries alone just on that abdomen. And then he was shot in the left arm and we still have shrapnel come up out of that arm. You can every once in a while have to take tweezers and get the shrapnel out, you know? It'll just move itself up. Nick um, remembers everything about that day. He remembers where he was when he was shot, where he was when he was shot. His brain is all there. It just, the damage he got to his uh, some of his brain and his brain stem causes his brain not to be able to, uh, you know, make the body function like we normally do without thinking. Well, it takes Nick effort. Uh, Nick is, you know, considered a quadriplegic. Despite how difficult you may think Nick's life is, the truth is he is the one pushing forward. Certain things are going on with Nick and of course they're wanting us to uh, talk about end of care, end of life, care, you know, and that sort of thing. He's not ready for that. I asked him the other day, I said, are, are you ready to, uh, do you want to be resuscitated if anything, you know, if, if your heart stops or anything like that? And he said, yes. He depends on us to suction him so he can breathe. He depends on us to, to take care of, um, of everything that, that, that he's going through. I'm gonna be honest, he, like I told him at the legislature, he poops in a bag, you know. He breathes through a machine. How is that living? It's not a life. 
but he pushes forward. The sixth officer injured that day was Chad Montgomery, grazed by a bullet on his head, something he said left him with PTSD and many sleepless nights. Five years later, Officer Montgomery remains an officer at the Baton Rouge Police Department. Now there's a reason this entire time I have avoided one specific word when referencing five years. I tend to think of anniversary as a celebration day. And, you know, when somebody has an anniversary, uh, everybody says congratulations. Well, you can't say that to any of us, you know, any of the ones that got shot. It's just not a celebratory day. It's not something to be happy about. So five years later, you may ask what you can do to help. The one thing all the families will ask you, it doesn't cost you a thing. The prayers are going to be about my biggest asking everyone to continue to pray for him. And not just him, you know, for all the others that were hurt that day. It's, it's not easy. It's not easy for anyone. It's not easy to lose anyone, you know. We didn't, like I said, we didn't lose Nick, but he lost his life. His children lost their father. His brothers lost their little brother. The two yays say it's your love and prayers over the past five years that have been the biggest blessing for them. In fact, they have boxes of all the letters you have sent over the years and read every single thing to Nick. With Unfiltered with Kieran, I'm Kieran Chawla. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Unfiltered with Kieran.